Welcome scholars. Take a look at slide number 10 in your notes, the one with the squares on it. This is on Newton's second law. We can write Newton's second like this. This is a useful way of thinking of it because we can bring in the ideas of directly and inversely proportional. So the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force on the object. The way we have this equation written, if we apply more force, more net force to an object, we will experience greater acceleration. This equation shows that if we had a bigger force divided by some mass, we're going to get a bigger answer or a bigger value for the acceleration. And conversely, if we had a smaller force, we would get a smaller acceleration. We can say that these two variables, force and acceleration, are directly proportional to each other because when one gets larger, the other one gets larger. When one gets smaller, the other one gets smaller. Let's take a look at the relationship between mass and acceleration. The acceleration of an object is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So if the mass of the object were to get bigger, its rate of acceleration would get smaller. And you can think of it mathematically, taking some force, dividing it by some mass. If you're dividing by a larger mass, you'll get a smaller value for acceleration. So this is called inversely proportional. Larger mass, smaller acceleration, or smaller mass, larger acceleration. And this is just another way of highlighting this relationship. Anytime you see an equation where you have a variable on top, it's always going to be proportional, directly proportional to the other variable on the other side. Anytime you see a variable in the bottom of a ratio, it's going to be inversely proportional to whatever variable is on the other side of the equation. I want to highlight this with one simple example. If you have one piece of pizza and you have a party where twice as many people show up than you were expecting, when you equally share that pizza, because you have twice as many people, each person is only going to get half as much. So we can say that the size of the pizza slice will be inversely proportional to the number of people sharing it. Let's take a look at these examples here. Um, so we have a hand pushing a brick. We can say that acceleration is directly proportional to the force. What if we have two hands exerting twice as much force? You will get blank as much acceleration. So say out loud what you think the answer will be. That's correct. Twice as much acceleration. Twice as much force produces twice as much acceleration. We can see it mathematically. We can put a 2 in front of the force to show that it is 2 times the original force. And that will cause 2 times the original acceleration. Directly proportional relationships can be shown with a graph that has data in a straight line. As force is doubled from 2 to 4, the value from acceleration went from 1 to 2. It also doubled. Hopefully your data looked something like this, if you're able to record data accurately. Let's take a look at the inversely proportional aspect of this. Again, we go back to one hand accelerating a brick. What if we have the same hand, the same force, now accelerating two bricks? The same force accelerates two bricks blank as much. Say out loud what you think the answer would be. If you said it will accelerate half as much, you are correct. We can see it mathematically where we are doubling the mass by putting a 2 in front of it. So now we have 2 times the original mass. And in order to keep this as an equation, that means there would be a 2 on the bottom on the left side, which makes the A one half the original A, one half the original acceleration. What if we have the same force being exerted to 3 bricks? So now we have an object that has three times the inertia, three times this, the tendency to not want to accelerate. And what do you think the answer is going to be? Say it to yourself out loud. That's correct. It's going to accelerate one-third as much. When we graph inversely proportional variables, we get a graph that looks like this. 
And we can see here um, that when the mass, uh, let's look at the mass here. The mass is 0.5. When it doubles to 1, the acceleration became half of what it was. The acceleration went from 20 to 10. So as we make the mass larger and larger and larger, this graph would, um, would approach zero acceleration. So an object with infinitely large mass would accelerate infinitely small rate or a rate of approaching zero. Okay. Um, now, to tie these two together into the same equation, what if we are applying twice as much force to twice the number of bricks? How will that affect the rate of acceleration compared to original force on original mass, one force on one brick? Say the answer out loud. Did you say the same acceleration? If you did, that's correct. Doubling the force, but also doubling the mass, has, um, has those two effects canceling each other out. So you get just the original acceleration that you had. The equation for Newton's second law can be written in actually three forms. Here I'm showing you the two most common forms of writing it. A equals F net over mass, or cross multiply, you get F net equals mass times acceleration. As far as the units go, mass is measured in kilograms, acceleration is meters per second square, and when we go through and multiply these units together, we're going to get kilogram times meters per second square, which is also known as a Newton. So when we work within the metric system, or what we call the SI, International System of Units, as long as we're measuring mass in kilograms, as long as we're measuring acceleration in meters per second square, then the force required for that will be measured in Newtons. And then here's a, an example similar to the example that you saw um, on the page in your textbook. We're pulling a mass that's two kilograms with a force, applied force of 12 newtons, but there's two newtons of friction force. What will be the acceleration of the two kilogram part? First, to find uh, the net force acting on it. And so we can see the net force is going to be 10 newtons to the right after we subtract 12 from 2. And then we divide that 10 newtons by 2 kilogram mass, and we get 5 meters per second square of acceleration. So it'll get faster by 5 meters per second each second. Okay, scholars, thanks for tuning in. This is what I wanted to go over about Newton's second law.